This is Just The Job. Hi there and welcome to Just The Job. We kicked off our third series last week with an Air Force special, but this week we're back to our usual format with three fantastic and very different careers. Now what we want to do is give you a taste of some of the huge opportunities that are available to you and along the way provide you with a whole lot of advice and tips to make that important career choice easier for you as well. In today's show, 17 year old Jessie discovers being protected against fire is just as important for precious objects as it is for people. Michelle from Whangarei finds out whether her caring nature is something that could be an asset for her career aspirations. And 18 year old Michael wants to get his hands dirty in a cool job, so we have just the thing for him. But first up, let's join Jesse as he checks out one of the most important safety aspects of the Auckland War Memorial Museum when he finds out what goes into protecting both the exhibits and people from fire. I'm Jesse Rees, I'm a seventh form student from Auckland City. I'm 17 and I'm here to check out a career in fire protection systems. So, what better place to bring Jesse than the Auckland War Memorial Museum? where fire protection engineer Jason Dyer shows there's more to the job than blazing sirens and speeding fire trucks. Hey, how's it going? I'm Jesse. Hi Jesse, I'm Jason. Hi. The reason we brought you to the museum today is to show you some of the fire protection systems that are installed here in the museum. Yep. Uh, if you come this way, I'll show you some of the systems we've got. Cool, let's go. Fire protection is a little bit different from firefighting, which is what the fire service does to a large extent, other than their own safety promotion and so forth. And that fire, with fire protection, we're installing systems into buildings and designing the buildings to actually make them safe in the first place. We've got a number of different systems that are installed in a site like a museum, basically to protect life safety and also to protect property protection, for example, the valuable artefacts and so forth in here. We have some, a number of key objectives. One of them is to detect the fire early, for example, picking up smoke, yep. alert the occupants so they can get out, and then to control the fire so that it doesn't spread and cause damage, and also, again, to allow people to escape safely. There's a number of systems in here that will actually accomplish that. They start off with smoke detectors. There's a detector across there in the roof there. Other systems in place include sprinkler systems to suppress the fire, hose reels and manual call points. It doesn't pay to wait for a real fire to know if the alarms work and systems must be tested weekly. We've got an indication come up on the panel being that little red light, which yep. is telling us that that particular call point's been operated, mm -hmm. so we know this device is active. If we come around here to the fire alarm mimic panel, which will show us where the detector is that you operated. Okay. So here's a mimic panel at the front, which is what the fire service respond to when they arrive. As you can see, the system's gone into fire mm -hmm. on the ground floor basement, which is the area where our call point is. I guess one of the things with fire protection engineering is you do see more than just the front of the building. You do actually see everything, including sort of the back of house areas interesting processes and plants and things that go on behind the scenes. So yeah, it can be interesting. Also of interest is the fire pump room. This is where we have the sprinkler control valves and the diesel pump, which we test on a weekly basis to make sure the systems are going to work. So what's all this stuff in here? What we've got here is we've got a town main coming in from out in the city, out in the street. Comes in through, comes in through a booster pump driven by a diesel engine. That boosts the pressure to our sprinkler system, so we've got enough pressure to drive the system and get water out of the sprinklers throughout the museum. First up, the fire alert system has to be isolated. So if we start testing without turning that off, the fire brigade would come? Correct, we'd call the fire brigade out. Oh, okay. Next, it's time to record pre-test readings. We don't want to flood the museum, so it pays to close the water valves. And it's time to start the engine up for a test run. Okay, so if you want to push the green start button, it'll start the pump up. The test run readings are looking good. Well, that was fun. Although we've got automatic systems in here like, um, fire, like wet pipe fire sprinkler systems and smoke detection systems, there are a lot of other systems that could be used to protect high value assets. Okay. For example, we might use gas suppression systems where we flood the area with a suppressant gas, which gives us a very clean sort of result. What would you recommend for Raja then? For Raja, the fire sprinkler protection we've got here is probably appropriate for this level of risk. As we get to sort of things that are even harder to replace, then you might consider a higher level of protection. Maintenance of the fire detection system is a very important part of the job and that includes knowing how to rewire and install a smoke alarm. Hope you're not scared of heights, Jesse. Okay, what we've got here is a base for a smoke detector. Uh -huh. It's already been installed. 
why is coming on, going to it and why is it meant to come from it. Yep. So we need, first thing we need to do is install these wires. I'll show you how we do it. The biggest reward for me is actually knowing that the systems are protecting people and I know the Fire Protection Association keeps a record of all the activations that have been successful in controlling a fire. So it's always good to see that every month come through and know that the systems have done their job and they have protected people. With so many fire protection systems in the market, Jesse heads to FireTech, New Zealand leaders in fire technology training, to meet Administration Manager Penny Steadman and find out how to get started. OK, well the first thing you need to do is look around um, and get a job in a fire protection company and that's not going to be difficult because they're really looking for young people now and there are companies from Whangarei right down to Invercargill. And if you thought a sprinkler was a sprinkler, think again. There's actually quite a wide range. We've got just a small number of types of sprinklers in front of us. In this case it's an upright sprinkler. So it's screwed down to a pipe that's pressurised. When the fire gets hot enough, this little glass bulb shatters due to the heat. The plug is pushed out by the pressure and the water is discharged down onto the fire. It's time to fan the flame of Jesse's enthusiasm and fight a fire. Jesse, fight the fire. We get some very challenging buildings or installations to protect against. For example, you might get a refinery, you might get um, a, a um, dangerous goods store or something like that. We've got to do quite a bit of research into what's actually going into that area before you can design the best system for it. So yeah, there can be a fair bit of work in the background. Sort of, it makes me feel good when I know one of our systems has done its job. I just want to say that I've had a really good experience and it's been really fun and really good for me to, to have this opportunity and yeah, I'm just real glad that I had it. The fire protection industry is a rapidly growing field and there are many jobs available in both the manufacturing and service providing sectors. You need to get a job first in the industry before you can be eligible for an apprenticeship, the costs of which are partially funded by Competence, the industry training organisation. There are several NZQA recognised national certificates which you can study for by correspondence whilst working and earning. It is beneficial to have at least an NCEA level 2 or 3 in English or Maths or some bench work experience before entering the industry. Well there's definitely more to fire protection than Jesse might have first thought but he did prove that he has what it takes to face a fire head on so best of luck Jesse if that is the career path that you decide to follow. After the break we're going to join Michelle and see whether her personality is suited to a career where compassion and respect are key ingredients to being successful. This is just the job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where every week we take a look at three diverse careers to help you discover what could be out there waiting for you. Now, do you like the idea of a career that connects with people and where you can lend a helping hand? Well, if you do, stick around as Michelle finds out what's involved in a career and community here. Hi, I'm Michelle, I'm 17 and I'm here to look at caregiving for the older person. We're taking Michelle to Whangarei and to the Kama Rest Home and Village to look at the job of a caregiver. Good morning Michelle, how are you? My name's Dale and um, I'm the education coordinator here. How about I take you um, around Karma Home and just show you what we've got, got here. Okay, sounds cool. Okay. Here at the village there's four residential blocks, three of them requiring different levels of care. At Tuatara Court the residents are independent but there's help when it's required. Alice Court is a dementia care unit, here the supervision is very hands on and Carmo is the rest home. This is the rest home area and we have 40 beds, 40 residents um, reside in the rest home area and they need to be reasonably mobile. Michelle starts out by helping with breakfast at Alice Court, the specialist care unit. The girls have usually um, got the residents up and dressed and showered and some of these people have memory loss um, and they probably aren't sure, you know, they might feel a bit hungry in their tummy, but they're not quite sure where to go for breakfast. After breakfast, um, they usually have grooming, where the, the caregivers um, clean their teeth and um, do their hair, maybe a bit of lippy on the ladies. Okay. Who are you? All mine, are they? Okay. Well, I think you need to be a caring person. I think you need to have um, a gentle nature and, um, and respect for the old person. Back at Tuatara Court, Michelle helps with the morning rounds. But first of all, we always knock on the door because this is their house 
and uh, we wait for them to come or answer. Hello, Sheila. This is Michelle. And um, we're just calling in to see if we can help you with anything today. Sheila Mason often needs a bit of help in the morning. It's the little fiddly things that can be the hardest to handle. And today, Sheila needs help with her earrings. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> Carmo resident Audrey Murray has been a keen gardener all her life. And she's taken on the job of keeping the village colourful. Would you like to come and show us you know, where the weeds are that you want, that need pulling out, because Michelle's more yeah. than happy to oh. do it. You enjoying that, Michelle? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> she can bend over better than me. Yeah. That's right. That's why we need young people to do this sort of thing for you, don't we? It's really important to look at the resident as a person, because we want to give them personalised care and that means looking at, at them as a person and treating them as an individual. They may need assistance with dressing and their meals, breakfasts, assisting to get ready for bed, general wellbeing. All right, Edna. The regular routine of three healthy meals a day all adds to that feeling of wellbeing too. Right, for your lunch today we have golden sausages, mashed potatoes, carrots, peas and beans. For your dessert today, we have upside down pudding and there's jugs of cream upon your table. Caregivers here get the chance to achieve national certificate qualifications and there's heaps of support information to help them get there. One of the booklets is how to move equipment and people. Okay, and this is what they call a handling belt here. And um, they use handling belts to give a resident um, some confidence. Um, and because the human body doesn't have any handles, this lifting belt gives us some handles. Michelle's shown how to fasten and use the belt. Skin. Then it's her turn to give it a go. Okay, Michelle, do you want to um, put that around my waist to make sure it's nice and firm? One, two, three. Wow, well done. Keeping the residents cheerful and entertained is all part of the job. And so when the residents come here, within the first fortnight, we have a family meeting with their families and we talk about all those interests that they had. Um, maybe they can't remember that far back, but you notice that immediately you bring in something like card playing or maybe they love music, um, maybe they played the piano. Um, we bring those interests into their care and, um, and it gives them a, a, a sense of well-being and, um, and, and, and feeling really good about themselves because maybe they haven't been doing those things at home. I love my job here at Kama Home. I have a real passion about um, the residents in, in Alice Court or in the Dementia Wing. Um, seeing how I can help them and their families have a better quality of life. So how's Michelle done? Michelle has done magnificently. She's got a natural talent. I can see that she's a quick learner and um, I think she should make an awesome caregiver. I think this is an industry that I would really like to get into. I think it's a really nice environment. It's all like a family and it's something I would really like to do in the future. And last word goes to Audrey. Caregivers are angels. <laughs> Structured workplace-based programs ensure qualifications are achieved. Skills are gained on the job and the training can be tailored to your particular interest. The Gateway program allows students to gain work experience and achieve unit standards. There are many job opportunities in the community as New Zealand's ageing population has led to an increase in people requiring care. Well, what a rewarding career working with elderly people. I reckon that's pretty cool. And if it's something you think you could be interested in, then you can find out more about that career and all the careers featured throughout our entire series on our website. So go grab that pen and paper. I'll have all those details for you at the end of the program. Now, after the break, we're going to find out if Michael has found the cool job that he's looking for. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job and if you're trying to figure out what career path to follow then make sure you tune in every week because this show could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. I'm going to catch up with Michael now. He wants a job where he can get stuck in and get his hands dirty. So could a career as a refrigeration engineer fit the bill? 
Uh, my name is Michael Eastham. I'm 16 years old and I go to Monero High School. Uh, I'm interested in getting my hands dirty, get out there, have fun, getting the experience and all. Yeah. Michael wants to work in a really cool job, so he's off to spend some time with the guys at Arneg New Zealand to learn about refrigeration engineering. Hey Michael. Hi. Um, Matthew. Hey, nice Matthew. to meet you. Matthew Darby is the owner and general manager of Arneg New Zealand and industry leader in refrigeration engineering. Um, a refrigeration engineer is a, is a multi, um, multi discipline role really. Uh, there's there's uh, fault finding, there's uh, engineering, there's electrical work, um, plumbing, um, so it's a, it's a wide range of uh, skills are required. Matthew's brother James also works for the company. It is he who will be taking Michael out on the road. Hey James, James, this is Hi. Michael. Nice to meet hey you. Michael, how you going? Good, Michael's good. going to be with us for a couple of days, so I thought he could ride with you and you can show him what we're up to and what we're about. Yeah, not a problem. Refrigeration engineers are responsible for the design, installation, servicing and maintenance of refrigeration and air conditioning systems. So James and Michael are off to do a routine check at Le Bon Cuisine. So this is a uh, core room where all the products store before it goes out. How cold is it here? It's about two degrees. Two. So. Jeez. It's quite important to have a good uh, understanding of maths and, and uh, in physics, gas laws and things like that. Um, refrigeration is very much about pressures and temperatures and also being keen to get your hands dirty. Now uh, basically now logged into the controller um, so we can have a look and see what uh, the refrigeration plant's doing now. Um, these are uh, uh, such a pressure and that's our target so that's what we're trying to achieve. Because many refrigerant substances are toxic, it's important to check for leaks. Hey Michael, this is an um, electronic leak detector. Yeah. One of the reasons we obviously we don't want a leak on the system is that the refrigerant gas is bad for the environment. As well as testing for external gas leaks, it's also necessary to test for internal leaking into the refrigerant liquids. This is done by draining off a sample and sending it for chemical analysis. Gaining access to some of the refrigeration machinery can require a reasonable amount of agility and a good head for heights. Needless to say, a safety conscious attitude is vital. Okay, so this is what's called the condenser. So basically in a refrigeration system you're trying to remove heat from a room and you need to expel it, which is what this condenser does. Once you're qualified, um, it's a trade that you can travel with, certainly. Um, Myself and, uh, and a lot of the guys here have all uh, come out of their time and done their OEs and, and uh, travelled overseas and worked with their trade. So it's a, it's a kind of trade that um, once, you've, once you're fully qualified, um, you can really move on and, and upwards at, at your own speed if you want within the trade. Next stop, Pack and Save Henderson, the Southern Hemisphere's biggest supermarket. A large supermarket like this might have up to a million dollars worth of stock that must be kept at exactly the right temperature. If the cooling system goes down for too long, it can mean a huge financial loss. It's the refrigeration engineer's responsibility to make sure that that never happens. Some of the cooling methods used are very ingenious, and there's even one that's invisible. Right, but what we've got here is um, it's called an air curtain. So basically what you have is you have your cold air coming, blowing out the top here, down to the bottom, drawn back through the bottom. You can see there's a line of moisture in the two different temperatures. Basically all that does is just keep the cold air inside the cabinet, stopping it from spilling out. It helps keep the case more efficient. Because a supermarket sells a huge range of items that must be kept at different temperatures, there are numerous temperature zones to be maintained. Here on the shop floor it's 20 degrees. The produce area is 4 degrees. The meat section is 1 degree. And so is the dairy section. And the ice cream fridge is minus 22. Many areas of refrigeration engineering use cutting edge technology. The system here at Pack and Save is a New Zealand first. It uses a naturally occurring refrigerant, such as carbon dioxide, to reduce the temperature of the non-toxic coolant, which is then pumped around the system. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So I'll show you how to wash this condenser. Yep. Okay. Well, Michael wanted to get his hands dirty and he got his wish. So, what did the mentors think? Michael shows a lot of enthusiasm and uh, very interested to, to know more, so um, can't ask for more than that. Yeah, he went well. He seems like he's keen to get in there and learn and not afraid to get his hands dirty, which is always good to see. Besides the refrigeration and stuff, I, I like the travelling part of it. 
actually getting in there and using my hands because you know I don't mind getting my hands dirty and um, I don't know actually like being up there in the in the job doing stuff it's just great right now there's a high demand for more refrigeration engineering apprentices you can enter the job as an apprentice and complete a national certificate in refrigeration and air conditioning level 4 this normally takes four years and you can work and earn while you're doing it three years secondary education is desirable and preferred subjects are English, Maths, the Sciences, Technology and Computer Studies. And there are ongoing industry seminars to help you upskill and go even further. So it looks like with plenty of opportunities for refrigeration engineers, Michael might have found the cool job that he was after. So thanks Michael and everyone else who featured in today's program. Now today there are literally thousands of careers to choose from. This doesn't necessarily make it any easier to make a choice. So we certainly hope our programs will help you decide what career to follow. To help you even more though, here's Selwyn from Career Services with some great tips on how to show your potential employer that you have a winning attitude. When you're first starting out in the world of work, the most important thing you can show an employer is a keen attitude. Get proactive and organise your own work instead of waiting to be told what to do. Employers won't expect you to have a huge range of technical skills, but they will want you to work well in a team, be flexible and help out wherever you're needed. These are great things to highlight in your CV, whether you've used them in the classroom, with your whanau, or even on the sports field. Well, we hope you enjoyed our show this week. We'll be back again next week with three more interesting and really diverse careers, plus, of course, more helpful advice and tips. Now, if you want more information about how to make that right career choice or information on any of the shows covered today, then just jump on our program website, tvnz.co.nz, and enter the keywords, just the job. Good luck. I'll catch you next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.